Andy and Lindsay, and a hundred to the Greens, Neil and Peter. <laughs> Lingham House is renowned for its beautiful gardens, but also for being Beatrix Potter's summer retreat. Today, however, it's taken on rather a different personality. We've borrowed six magnificent cars from Cars of the Stars Motor Museum just down the road in Keswick. Just in present, it seems to me that memorabilia from films and television is becoming increasingly collectible. People kill for it, but has it always been like that? No, it hasn't always been like that. You have to look really to when television and film became exciting and became a mass market appeal. They make toys from the James Bond films, Thunderbirds and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, you then look at the baby boom era that those people were born in and you come to the middle 1980s when they were 20, 30 years old and they suddenly had the disposable income to say, hey, I want to relive my childhood. I'm going to buy the toys and the posters and get them on video. We want our teams to give insurance valuations on six cars. That's three per team. They've just got three minutes to complete the task. There are 100 points on offer and we're going to ask the red team, that's Candy and Lindsay, to bat first. This is sweet. Oh, this just has to be Noddy car, doesn't it? Only any Blighton books. Probably only would appeal to the British market, though. I don't think she was... Maybe the Ameri maybe American. Maybe American, market. yeah. I think maybe American. But obviously no, no wider than that, really. Do you reckon? 12? 15? I'll tell you what my lucky number is. <laughs> 13. <laughs> oh, this is certainly different, isn't it? It's certainly got some novelty value, and it would certainly appeal to the British public. Look at those dice! What do you reckon, then? I think because of the appeal to the British public. 7,000. Oh, this is more my style, I think. Yes, I like to drive this. This is really nice. But I'd like it to fly more, really. Yeah, this is the real <laughs> Chitty Chitty Bang going car. Genevieve. Genevieve. Oh, well, I think this one has to be the most expensive of the three, don't you? Yes, definitely. Definitely. On every Christmas, isn't it? I think it's well known. Yes, and Quite internationally well known, probably. Internationally well known, yeah. I think we'll go into the hundreds of years, mm -hmm. 160,000. Well, I think you rose to the challenge fairly well, but did they do it right, Justin? I think they did exceptionally well in the circumstances. I mean, this is one of three Chitty Chitty Bang Bangs actually made for the 1968 movie. Now, Ian Fleming wrote book and this was designed by Alan Mann in 1968 for the film and as you've correctly spotted it has an international appeal it cost £10,000 to make in 1968 and today has an insurance value of £175,000 so you were pretty close well what about Del Boy's motor then Justin well what can I say one careful owner Gov what will you give me for it <laughs> uh, I mean as a car for sale in a trade publication you'd be lucky to see a couple of hundred pounds for this <laughs> so we can instantly see how values change but it's only a UK show I would say you're a little bit high on your insurance value I mean I know Del Boy is a lovable character but I can't see anyone quite shelling out seven G's for it I would say nearer five thousand but a good effort well, Justin, I have to say, this is my top of the pops, this one. I really like it. But this, how did they do? This is your favourite, is it? This was a little bit difficult because I haven't actually seen or heard of Noddy, the live-action movie. So it's <laughs> actually not a film car as such. What's happened is that someone's taken a Fiat car, chopped it, and then it is used basically as a promotional item. But it is still a good Cars of the Stars type vehicle, but its value would be nearer, I think, £6,000. How did they score out of 100? Difficult, because they were quite a long way out on, on Noddy, uh, but exceptionally close on the other two. I think it would be fair to say 70. Sounds right to me. Well, yeah. Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Park Fair one. one. Parker drives it. Parker drives it. Lady, Lady Penelope, Penelope sits in the back. Sits in there. I don't think it's a, a no. Rolls Royce yeah. in as much. I think it's got something else under the bonnet. But I'd still like it. How much do you think it's worth, Neil? About 150 pairs and pounds. I reckon something like that. And if it's less than that, I think we'll buy it. Right, let's have a look at this one then. A oh. Morris Tourer. I oh, know this one. It's the old creatures, great and small. The vet. The vet. Harriet. Harriet. So how do you yeah. value this, Neil? Uh, 
I'll Ooh. tell you what I What do you think? I think about 10,000. Okay. Oh, oh look, perfect. I used to love this program. Got the California plates. I wonder if it flies and goes over mountain tops like the other and run in a film bit. Do you think it floats in the water? Uh, and floats <laughs> in the water. Mind you, they had to make a lot of these because there was a few of them that got smashed up. I suppose it's got to be worth about £5,000. Or do you want to go a bit less? Four and a half. Four and a half. So you're done. Now, Justin, what about the little old beetle then? How did they do on that? Your analysis was good. Yes. Because you actually said that it's not the only one. They had actually made 14 in all for the four films they made. And there are 10, I think, left in existence. Yes. Uh, this one is from Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. But it is just a beetle. So you are correct in thinking that the value maybe is just a little bit down. I would say nearer to £10,000. Mm. Right. Ooh. So much for Herbie. Now the lovely little tour. Its value is more going to be based on the value of the car itself as a Morris 8, yes. more than the fact it's from a TV series. So it only has a little bit extra yes. added on. 10,000, though, I think was a little bit high. I would say nearer 8,000 pounds. Right. Well, on to this purring great hunk here, Justin. <laughs> and this is your car, Lady Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> your, your analysis was quite interesting, because uh, who do you think drives this car? Parker. Oh. But Parker was about that tall. Yes. So this obviously wasn't the car that actually appeared mm -hmm. in the TV series. Obviously. It was actually made Miniature. for Jerry Anderson for the 1968 movie Thunderbirds Ago, and it was used basically to promote the film, take people to the, the premiere. Yes. And I understand it's the only non-Rolls-Royce car, because it's based on a Bedford a coach by Rolls -Royce. <laughs> of some sort, to actually have the spirit of ecstasy on the front yes. and the grill. So it's, it's very special. You said you wanted to buy it if it was less than £150,000. Well, sold to that man <laughs> there. The insurance company will take 80000 off you. 80000 Justin, what about the points? Have you thought about that? I have. Uh, you were a little bit way out on, on your values, but I've compensated for the fact that your analysis was quite good, so I'm going to give you 60 out of 100. Thank you. Thank you. And that makes the score...